Welcome to the Language of Markets live. It's Freaky Friday, the 7th of June. Got that right? Got that right. All right. So today, been a busy week, huh? So now it's been a busy week for me. Um, today, we, we've been looking at pressure cookers, and we're going to do that again today in Another sort of way, but today's going to be mostly, mostly about mountains and valleys. Thanks to Pete bringing it up the other day. Um, so it's going to be about pressure cookers, but we're going to kind of look into it in a different way. What I'd like to show you guys is a very simplified way of looking at markets. And there's a lot of simplified ways. And really the whole key is to find a simplified way to kind of see what price is doing. So I'm not going to babble too much about it. I'm just going to get on with it. Pete, did you follow the little valley we did in the 240? Did you see that? Where we marked it? Did you see it? We marked it live. Price was heading up. You did? And did you see it turn? Boom, right? See that? You did that just because the other day you couldn't see it, and then today you saw it. Boom. Yes. Pretty cool, huh? All right, so that's a good step to make. I mean, that was beautiful the way that all came out. All right, we're going to look at that in a minute. First, let's, let's, I have a few questions from members, and if I don't get to questions today, we'll get to them. Um, but I do want to get some instruction down on mountains and show you just a way of seeing, you know, we're going to break it down a little bit. Um, before we get started, let's look at what we had working, guys. Come on. You guys remember, we did this Euro-Yen. The lesson was, we just grabbed it off the fly, said, is there a swing? Where are they at? Oh, now that we can structure markets and swings, we can draw lines. And we can go swing by swing. And the next thing we did was watch it go up and then think about the possibility of it coming back, right? And we marked out sort of where, just remember, we were reading buyers and sellers. This is effort reversed. This is a little outside bar here. This is an outside bar. It's effort. Reversed. And so I want you guys, whether you actually do a trade or I do a trade or whatever, my trading's been kind of light. I mean, my trading's been kind of nervous, actually. All this change, so you got to watch things, right? You know, nothing's really different in the markets, but I noticed my trading's been a little changed. I noticed uh, there's a little more... Um, trepidation it's like no no every trade really counts now right and it has nothing to do with the market it has nothing to do with the market grace says that's my trade i didn't take it because i was too tired <laughs> the market doesn't know you're tired grace <laughs> but i'm so happy you saw it that thrills me that i that i teach you guys structure and then you can actually see right you can see and the most important part of that is not, okay, it works, doesn't work, blah, blah, blah. But you're not guessing. You're not relying on anybody. You read some things, and you're just seeing some waves in here. That's all. You're just seeing some waves in here. It's beautiful. You're going to post it? Well, remember we did this, we did this chart live and that you saw this live, real time. You're ready to come do it. Post it anyways, Grace. I mean, everybody here should see that we all fumble around a little bit. You know, I, I'm going to put these charts up and look and think, and I show you my fumbling. But everybody should see we all, but we start to get it with some very simple ideas. And this is how, and I know we haven't done the outside bar lessons recently, but just look, just read it, all right? Just read it. We come up, we come down hard. This is the biggest bar, biggest 
we come down in these little swings. And this is the markings. I'm not doing this after the fact. We did this the other day. And back to retest. And then grind. And remember, swings don't just go straight up forever. They swing. They swing. Here's with the long conversion. All right, Grace, do you see the short conversion right here? So you see that? Beautiful. Beautiful. And so, you know, when we, um, I don't know, where were we looking at it? Up here someplace. Yeah, so that's beautiful. See, you're reading it. Isn't that a gorgeous thing? You know, even if you didn't take it, you read it through its process and said, oh, this is where the swing might be birthed. And this is a return to the scene of the crime. In 20 minutes, same thing, though, right? 20 minutes, you'd see something like that. And it would look something like this. Yeah, go post a chart. Or if somebody needs to make a room to post charts, we'll get on that. But that's gorgeous. I love that people are seeing these things. Beautiful. And there's a feeling of reading it, too. There's a feeling of reading it. You know, even if you're wrong, you're not guessing. And so this is like following it in process. Oh, effort, zoomed, I can take a quick one. And then some days you might find yourself so in tune, okay? You might find yourself so in tune that you take a, a little one here and you get out and then you reconsider. Yeah, sometimes we get tired, you know, we don't. We're not sure if we're seeing straight. She says, I was tired, didn't feel confident in my seeing. That's okay. I could tell you this, though. The fact that you saw it all, blah, 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 you're ahead of 90% of the whole trading industry like that. Just the fact that you can, you can read. And so that's something... That's something to be proud of, that you put that work in and you <laughs> listen to me babble and deciphered my babbling. So that's something to be proud of, that you can read. You're doing something not many people in the world can do. Now, when it comes time to pull in the trigger, okay, we got a whole new set of circumstances. Just need to bridge that gap. And that gap, that, 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 that bridge can be little or it can be really big. Right? <laughs> but it's a start, huh? Yeah, a bridge too far. <laughs> and so anyways, see, this ain't all about you. I was talking about me, Grace. All right. So anyways, I was saying, it's really reading a book, right, Phil? It is. It's like that's what I used to say. I used to laugh at people with all of their junk. And it's like just read the stupid thing. And so I was saying about what I was doing is that, you know, I made a big switch and change, got websites going. I'm a bit tired, too. You know, I read these things, but I've noticed some trepidation in my trading, having to do with, oh, each trade counts now. You know, you got to pay the – you got to you got to keep paying the – but it's no different than it was a month ago. I was paying the bills a month ago with the trades. But so we make that, that bridge in our minds a little bit, and we're all going to do it. But we notice it and practice with it, all right? So it's going to happen. It happens to every professional. Every professional, every successful trader will go through periods where life happens to them. You know, people get sick. People die. People get mad at each other. People, you know, do all kinds of stupid things. Life happens. And so we have to be willing to... Uh, you know, notice and work with that because, you know what, this is just price, right, Grace? The market don't know we're tired. None of that. The market don't know, don't care. It's just you either get on board or you don't. You know, this isn't no sissy stuff where, you know, you can worry about all kinds of weird little things and get a support group going. You either get on board or you don't, and the facts show up in your trading in the market, and you either get hit or you don't get hit. And it's that simple. And so we have to grow a little maturity when it comes to this. All right. So I wanted everybody to see, right? This is stuff we're doing here. 
We're not doing old trades with cherry picked. Sometimes we do that for a lesson, but we want to see this stuff in action. And then you want to see how you can put the mechanics together. Okay, so you come in here, and I haven't done a a whole stop segment yet, but, you know, I look at the ATR. You know, I look at the ATR of these guys at the time, and there's a, there's a roundabout um, doubling it out, right, for a stop. And then you look at your three to one, and you say, ah, there's the center of the swing, right? There's the there's at least a three to one there, or I can go for more. And then you make a decision on the whole thing. All right, so it was kind of fun to watch that come out live. You know, it comes, it didn't land on the swing perfectly. It kept going. Okay, and... A stop might have got stopped out or not, but we were we were marking all kinds of things in here, so it's just something that we want to that we want to learn from. You know, we're doing the whole fall off the yeah right into the press, right? I mean, I'm not going to take it apart too much, Ned. I want to get into some some things, but yeah, you see that right into the press. And one of the big things we've been doing is you know where they fall off the cliff. And we can watch that live. We can watch that live. All right, so let's make a quick look at this 240 that we marked out. So I, mark, I usually, guys, I'll, I'll usually mark a little blue thing if we're doing something live where we leave off. And so this is beautiful learning here this is going to go directly into our pressure cooker lessons you'll see how I bring it together but what we were talking about was a mountain and a valley and thanks for the questions and Pete bringing it up saying I don't know what a mountain and valley is but once you know you can then see something you never saw before. And you can actually make decisions back. And you can buy this big pressure cooker. You can sell that. You can wait for that to break. You can wait for that to break and make a bigger. See, watch, make a bigger. Here's a big mountain, and this would be a big valley. And so you want to watch what happens. So we were swinging. Looks like my my short was a little little too early, right? Isn't that the old famous traders? I was early. And then zoom. Okay. Now, so according to this pressure cooker, not a type one. So what are we going to look at? Type 2s, type 3s. And we'll watch it live. We'll watch it live and see what this thing offers us. I mean, we've been talking a lot about process. So just, you know, follow the process. What's the swing here? What's this little swing? Right? Maybe it comes in, does something like this. Who knows? But let's learn from this and see what goes down. All right, that's that. And let's quickly look at the yen. It doesn't take long, guys. It doesn't take long. And then we're going to get into our lesson, right? We got a swing here. We got a swing here. We got a swing here. Okay, we have a bigger swing. It's just, if we're looking at this frame, we have a bigger swing. And so we can see price did what? It hit about at that guy. I think we marked some sellers along here before we left on Wednesday. And you can see the sellers hit. It's not hard. Just look for the multi-pivot line. Just look for the multi-pivot line. 
and they tried to make a new low, no dice, big gap. We're going to mark that. And so there's really not too much analysis we have to do. Ricardo, what would you do from here? All right? If if you've got this swing and this swing, now what? We don't have to put a lot of work into it. Draw a median line, right? And price has a high probability of reaching the median line. Okay, so you bought at 108, so you made a plan. That's good. Now, whatever your plan was, stick to your plan and learn from your plan. That's all. Yeah, it's that simple. And then know the facts, Jack. Know that if you're buying at 108, okay, know that if you're buying at 108, you're buying down here near the bottom of the range, basically, which isn't a bad thing, right? See, it's, it's a range. Simplify this. Simplify this. I got stopped out today with Crazy Bar. What Crazy Bar? There ain't no Crazy Bar. Crazy Bar. I don't see no Crazy Bar. You guys are crazy with Crazy Bars. So if you bought at 108 and you got stopped, you bought at 108 over here, Shane likes crazy bars. Yeah, I don't see no stinking crazy bars. Oh, so you bought at 108 over here. Ah, okay. So, okay, I can see that. I can see that. Okay, watch. Let's just work this a little bit, all right? Basically, I want you to learn from your trade and know what you're doing. So let's say you bought at 108 over here based on whatever, okay? So if you bought at 108, or 108.12, if you bought at 108 over here at 108.12, then you get stopped out on crazy bar. I guess that's crazy bar. It's good. It's telling you it ain't going that way anymore. It's going that way. Take your stop, right? That's all. You learned something. But um, me personally, I'm just going to give a, a, a reasoning, and you can tell me if it makes sense or not. Okay? If I get long here, And I know there are sellers here, and you have the ability to draw this box. I know there are sellers here. I know this is the median line set. I know you have the ability, Ricardo, to draw this, right? Okay. So if I buy at 108 here, I know I'm buying for some reason to get cranking up here someplace. Nate talked himself out of the short, was looking for that crazy bar. <laughs> okay, so everybody follow me on this. If you're going to buy at 108, cool. Okay, I get it, right? You get a hard down, a little ding ears, drifting, you're going to buy at 108. Don't put your head in the sand. The market's going down. Sellers are here. Watch. Boom, 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 boom. Everybody with me? We're just going to, we're not going to f formulate this. We're not going to make a formula for our trades. We're going to actually be very mature and responsible because we can read certain things and we're going to act like traders. And so we want to know what's going on. There is no formula that's going to save our butts. And so this is easy to do. Okay, that's a projection. That's easy to do. Drawing that median line, that's easy to do. Knowing that's the projection, that's easy to do. This is the language of markets. Knowing there are sellers. Now, whether you see these easy things or not, you've got to look for yourself because most people here can do these things. And maybe you just decided not to see them. Mm, that's okay. That happens to me too. But everybody should be with me that 
We've been doing that lesson, that lesson, easy to see. We've been drawing multi-pivot lines, easy to see. Ricardo says, question, in that situation, is it okay to see more than around 150 bars? It's okay to do whatever amount of bars you want to see. There is no not okay. We don't do dogma here. It's okay to go back to this, and it's kind of hard to actually just trade with 150 bars and get a three-to-one trade. You don't need to fix yourself into some kind of formula for the amount of frame. And we're going to have some talks about frame. Look, this is 245 bars. That's 150 bars. That's a frame of this. If you want to trade a frame of this, you're not likely to see a three-to-one trade in here in this situation, are you? Maybe, but not likely if you're doing that. If I fix you at 150 or 250 or 80, um, the market, we need to see its structure no, where, no matter where it is. My basic rule of thumb, Ricardo, is I kind of want to see the last swing, and that's it however many bars that turns out to be. If you want to do a range trade, do a range trade. But I kind of want to see the last swing. And so there's no way to fix a number for this. What's with the crazy bar, guys? Grace was waiting for crazy bar too, but seller ran in the pipe. <laughs> What's with the crazy bar? Well, I'm not crazy. I'm, there's no intensity in that bar. <laughs> you guys are nuts. Crazy people, not crazy bars, crazy traders. And so we'll have a discussion on amount of data, but please don't limit yourself. I mean, sometimes I do exercises where I tell people only trade with 40 bars. But I'm trying to do something very specific there. Or sometimes I do exercises where I say trade with 1,000 bars. I'm trying to do something very specific there. But when I'm looking at a market, I basically want to see the last swing. See, sometimes the structure, Ricardo, is going to be 150 bars. Sometimes the structure is going to be 250 bars. There's no way to formulate this. And I know we all want a formula. But I go to where I see a swing. I'm going to the last swing. And however many bars that happens to be is however many bars that happens to be. Do you see how we limit ourselves when maybe we hear somebody say, you should only use 150 bars on your chart? And then we believe them as if that's some sort of commandment. And it's not true. There's different situations. The market goes into different things. So we have to be careful when we hear that kind of stuff. You should only do, or you should always do this. Or some people go the other way. You should always use the multiple time frames. You're going to miss stuff if you don't miss, use the multiple time frames. And I say all those people are full of crap. All right? You can't condense trading like that. If the multiple time frames work for them, that's fine. I got nothing against it, although I see most people get confused. Other than that, if you don't get confused, use them. If you want to use 150, use them. See, that's the difference. Whatever's working for you. I generally go last swing. I want to see a swing. And then when you get here, reason to trade out, no matter what you're using. Right? If you want to just do a range trade, huh, do a range trade. Then you don't need that. Look, the market's in a range. You can do a range trade. Let's look. You know, you can do a range trade. You know, get yourself a stop that's, you know, 25 ticks or so. You know, sell it, buy it, sell it, buy it. I got nothing against range trading. You don't have to use a, a median line. It's going sideways. It's a big fat coil. Put it in your toolkit. You know, come up here and sell it. And then buy the crazy bar. 
But anyways, if you do this trade and you see certain things, even if you're not looking at all that, if you see sellers here, Ricardo, and you see they hit the sellers, you know the market is down. I mean, you might want to tighten this up. Do you, know, you guys get my understanding? If the market was just sort of floating upwards, I'm going to leave my stop alone. I'm going to let it ride. But if the market's already pushing down and this ain't cutting it, this ain't getting through sellers, I'm going to tighten up. Right? If the market – look, it's trying. It's on its way. I'm going to tighten up, and I'm going to be taken out at break even or a little bit of slippage on Crazy Bar. Can we come up with another name for that? Grace says, to limit oneself to 150 bars versus looking for structure or rhythm. Yes. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm going to do exercises once in a while, and we've done them, where I say only look at 40 bars because it does something to your experience. It does something to your focus. But that doesn't mean only do that. I know it would be nice to have – if I had the instruction, the one instruction, I'd give it to you. But this is what I learned, and probably took me, you know, 15 years at least to learn this, that everybody with a fixed instruction is full of crap. It's dogma. Sometimes it could work. If you can, if you can, I've traded with multiple time frames. It gets confusing, but it can be done. I'm not against it as long as you don't get completely confused. But most people come up here and they look at a thousand bars and they say, I'm going to trade this swing. And the volatility in this swing requires probably a 60 tick stop. Then they're going to come over here and they're going to say, I'm going to use a little 10 tick stop because I can get in on this little bar. And so they confuse themselves. I see it over and over. But if you can do it, you can do it. But here, okay, you know, we're going to look at this guy. We're going to say it met its projection. And congrats on the entry, by the way, right? I like the entry. See, hard down, a little bit of reversal, drift back right into a little try here. I like the entry. But I'm going to be a little more skittish about moving my stop in this one. I don't have a fixed way you move stops every single time. In this case, do you understand why I'm going to be skittish, Ricardo, about you know tightening up a little quicker? Because they're stomping. On this market. Now, I know what I'm talking about takes a lot more work. And, you know, that's why I always congratulate everybody here. We're doing it the right way. There is no fixed dogma that's going to work. I'd be skittish about longs because the shorts have made money for a long time, right? Shorts have been killing it. Yeah, I got it. Good. I have it in my documentation that the sellers can control it. And good. As long as you know that, it's no big deal if you get wiped out or not. Now you just want to learn. You just want to learn from it. That's all. You just want to learn from it. This kind of structure here, right? Perfect. Median line touch. Boom. And then we can watch it here. But this kind of structure here, when you get one of these, especially on like a daily or a weekly chart, you can go right into range trading. Really. You can go right into range trading. You don't have to, but you can. See, the market does different things. You just want the ability to read. So that's a quick look at the – there, when we have crazy bar. Okay. <laughs> we have crazy bar. And sort of a little grind up into crazy bar. And I don't know, I'm just kind of eyeballing, you know, I'm just kind of eyeballing things here, you know, just kind of eyeballing things in here. But you can see, this is all still within the range, so we'll keep an eye on it. Yeah, thank you, Grace. Yeah. All right, let's do some lessons now. Let's do some lessons. And these lessons are directly applicable. They really are. But I want to do, I want to stay on a theme of mountain and valley. But first, 
we're going to just take today's oil market. I know a lot of people trading the oil market in here. We're going to work backwards from simple to understanding. All right. Today's oil market. This is yesterday, but this is analysis. We want to draw a swing. And I'm going to relate this to um, pressure cooker. So we want to draw a swing. We want to see, you know, price make a new high. And then what do we want to do? You guys remember the instruction? Follow it back down underneath the swing to where they launched it from, right? Good. Um, and you should be able to eyeball that. But you know what? In practice, I'd like everybody to do this. In practice, I'd like everybody to do this. Just sort of follow it, okay? Price comes off a bottom. Lifts. Kind of gets stuck. Comes down. And, you know, we can see, I mean, just sort of draw a little line across here. We kind of see where it got stuck. It wanders. Starts up again. Uh, gets stuck. So everybody see that it's um, it's running into some sellers here. Everybody see, you know, we're running into sellers. Everybody see we got we have pressure from these guys, and then pressure downward from these guys, and it's creating a pressure in here. I'm not predicting markets. I'm just looking. This market has made a leg. If it goes higher, it will confirm a swing low. If it goes lower, it will confirm a swing high. Nate says, I drew a line from the high to that around 10. Oh, from here or the big one, Nate? Big to that one. Oh, sort of a, sort of a like that. Yeah. And that's also a good visual. That's also a good visual to see the sellers hitting it on an angle. And, you know, you can get a visual of the buyers. And the main thing I want everybody to get is to back it up like this and to feel that there's pressure from sellers. And look at the way they came down into this into this U. Gina likes to call it a U-turn, right? This is that U-turn. I love that term. We're going to have to adopt that. And look at the process of a wash and rinse. You guys all see it? All right? It comes down, zoom, and gets a little sloppy, but up here. But it makes this, makes this U-turn here. So buyers are grabbing it, but sellers are hitting it. Okay, what's happening? What's happening? You know, this is people getting chopped up to little itty bitty itty bitty pieces going back and forth, right? Get me long. Oh no, stopped out. Get me short. Oh no, get me long. Oh, see, they're getting chopped up in a little itty bitty pieces, basically impulsing off emotions or Batman systems. There's plenty of little Batman systems. Batman, superhero, triple cross, upside down. Ali oop spin three times and jump into the volcano systems. And they're all getting chopped into pieces. And most of those systems have nothing to do with anything except momentum. And so the minute there's no momentum, you get chopped into little itty bitty pieces. And when there's momentum, you say, oh boy, the system works. Must be something wrong with me. No system works. So we watch. I'm making fun of myself here because I've been chopped up in this. And we don't know yet. 
ah, now we can literally see where they threw him up the cliff. We can see it. This is where. This is where it happened. Sellers, sellers, sellers. This is where the decide happened. Right in here. Happened right in here. And then the market didn't come down to it. It came down to this level. But you get the idea, right? You get the idea. So I'm thinking... Well, maybe, hmm. but this is the official pressure cooker here. This is where it happened. This is where it happened. But, you know, I'd be watching the price right in here. I'd be watching. It's getting close. I'll be doing bars. I'll be watching bars. I got a tail. I got a little swing. I'll be watching it. I'm watching you. I got to try. I got to zoom. I got a little swing. And I'll be wondering if I could get away with that or not. And, of course, I'll be having a median line drawn from structure that would look something like that, project, projecting that. So I learned something. It didn't come all the way back down. And price did a little bitty turn in here. Price did a little bitty turn in here. All right. Now let's do our lesson. We can use this chart for that lesson. Or I was trading the, the ES. And I think... We can use this chart for the lesson. It might come across even cleaner. It's trading the ES yesterday. And then we'll come back and do it on the oil. So now we're going to do all about mountains. Okay, we're going to do all about mountains, mountains and valleys. Before we get started. Now we're going to slow down a little bit. We got so much to do today. I got so many fun things to do. But now we're going to slow down a bit. This is all about mountains and valleys. Okay. Now we're going to slow down. Because a mountain goes through a process. So we looked at. That CAD 240, right? Looks something like this. And boom, we had a mountain. Or when it swapped, boom, we had a valley. And if you notice, it's also representative of a swing. So, but we want to see mountains and valleys. So if we're going to read, we want to see them in process. And so it all starts with what? A gap. And a gap is a wide range bar, bigger than the last three bars, with a space in between. The previous bar and this one. And empirically, it's the same as a gap. Orders are rushing through. You know, we're in 24-hour markets now. Orders are rushing through. It goes, it, if you ever watch one of these be created, the crazy bar, you're not going to see a whole lot of orders except, you know, little one-liners getting stopped, and it's skipping bids and offers. And so it's an emptiness in here. It's a gap, whether it looks like this or it looks like this. If you're actually watching that, that yen when it happened, you'll see the orders just disappeared. There was no way for you to get filled, except the wrong way, inside that gap. You know, whenever this thing goes like this, people usually start to market order around here, and they don't get filled till around here. And so it's good to understand something like that about a gap. And if we do it the other way, it's going to look like this. Now, this is absolutely related to our pressure cooker 
this mountain and valley thing I'm doing. And I'm going to show you the difference between a mountain and a sloped mountain. And this is where the pressure cooker comes in. But let's go step by step. So right here, there's a process. Okay. You got to do one. You got to do two. And what this is, is projecting a mountain the same way a median line set is projecting to the median line. Just a sloped mountain. If I take this median line set and do like this, you can see it's a sloped mountain. And so this is a projection of a mountain. It doesn't have to get filled. It's not necessary that it does get filled. But if it comes back down, it now becomes, so a gap structure now becomes a mountain structure. So let's actually do it like this. A gap is projecting a mountain. This is the first part of the process. The actual first part is the coil or the true level. And so next, what you'll see is step one, step two, and now it's got to go through another step and return to the mountain. And this is the process. So this is filling the gap. And this will make sense in a minute. Hard up and float down. It might come down a little faster, Phil, or sometimes it might look like this. Um, those are all things to notice. But either way, if it comes down, you know, we're going to call it a mountain or a V. And, you know, and from here, you know, it decides. And so that's step one, step two, step three. You know, it now becomes a mountain structure. And this is just so we can read price. We want to make these distinctions. And this will, this will get much more clear when we get to the chart. But we, we want to do this work. At step three, this becomes a, I still can't spell. Help. It's a good thing I don't chew gum. So at step three, this becomes a mountain structure. Pete says, does it have to come all the way back to qualify as a mountain? So let's say it has to come all the way back to qualify as a horizontal mountain. So that's good. Now, a mountain structure can be, say, sloped and still have the quality of a mountain, but it's sloped, right? But it would still have the same essence? Okay. Let me take you one step further. If it's sloped... This is usually where the try might be and the pressure cooker might be. You get that? We'll come back to that. See, it's making a sloped attempt there.
like that. See how it's still a mountain valley, but the whole thing is sloped? All right, that's just something interesting to put in your pocket right now. So sloped horizontal. Oh, man, I erased that. Sloped horizontal has the same essence. And maybe we'll find better wording for this. Remember, we're doing a lot of creating while we're here. So at step three, this becomes a horizontal. And whether it's horizontal or sloped, it still has the same essence. What was it Gina said to me? He said, you know, if you got a lump of clay, right? And then you take that lump of clay and you make it into a bowl. It's now a bowl, but it's still a lump of clay, isn't it? It's still got it's still a clay. You just shaped it into a bowl. And now you can write poetry about it and stories because you've now made a, a distinction in it. It's got a certain color, a certain texture, a certain all of that stuff. And so this is now a horizontal mountain structure. And from here we can, you know, we can make decisions in the same way this thing applies to the downside. And so we're just going to call that a valley. And it's going to have the same, same steps. And now we're going to open this up a little bit after we do this for further understanding. And why do we care? Well, this is where they threw them off the cliff. It becomes a reference point. And then we can start to think about the three types of trades. So this gap is projecting a valley. All right, so we're going to get a little more involved now. One more question. If it doesn't come down all the way but reverses and goes the other way, does that disqualify? It would probably turn it into a more of a sloped mountain, or actually, let's let's call it what? If it does that, you mean, Pete? It doesn't come down all the way. Okay. Think about this. And so, what do we call that now? So it doesn't make a mountain. So what's this called? A swing. There you go. Now you're learning the language. See? Anywhere in the process, it can change its mind about being a mountain. Just like the process of making a chair, you know? You can get one, two, three, four legs, and then you got to put a seat on. You know, without the seat, who knows what it is? With only three legs, who knows what it is? With only one leg, it could be a bat. So it has a process before it becomes a chair. And this has a process before it becomes a mountain. This is why people get in trouble trading. It's because they study all these patterns, and you don't know it's going to be a head and shoulders, a mountain, or anything else until after the fact. So it's really... It behooves us to learn the process of this stuff because you don't know. People can backtest these patterns, these triangles and wedges and head and shoulders and whatever they want to call it, a wash and rinse. You don't know till after the fact. But if you know while it's in process, you don't have to guess. You're watching all the options, and then you can take a choice. And you've got to take a choice in the unknown anyways. If you wait till afterwards, 
Okay, now you can call it something and you can sound cool because you know the name. But you want to follow the whole thing in real time. It gets a little more trickier. And that's the language. And so here it becomes a swing now. So it's not a mountain, right? It, it fills only halfway to the gap. And so now that it becomes a swing. But if it comes all the way down, we've now filled the gap. And, you know, we're thinking about mountains now. Much different. Okay. So now we have to add to this. Because when we're looking at the market, they're not always going to be single gaps, are they? So we have to learn the relative form of a gap. So even though these aren't, say, wide range bars, you should be able to see that this is still a gap in a, in a bigger volatility situation. So you can see it's, it's got a contraction of some sort and an expansion where it just lifts, 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 lifts. And so we need practice on seeing this relative-wise. So this would be a relative gap and mountain. And it's got the same process. It's just not as clean as one single bar. That's all. But it's got the same thing. It's still the same mountain. And you'll get used to seeing it on the chart because it has a shape to it. It's got a mountain type shape to it. It goes up fast and then it comes down and there's, there's this whole space underneath here. You know, there's this whole mountain looking thing. You know, it looks like a mountain. It doesn't look like a range. This looks like a range. This looks like a gap. This looks like a range. This looks like a gap. And then we come back down, and it's got this mountain shape. But in process, it starts here. One, two, one, two. Okay. Now i got one more little level to add to this. And we can do it with just one bar or all of these bars. But we're getting a little short on time. So I'm just going to do this right now. And then we're going to go to the chart. And then it should begin to make some sense. So we're just learning to see. And don't worry, we're going to go back over some of these lessons here. What you're looking for is, you know, the idea is, the idea of, 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 of this gap here is contraction, expansion. Continue or reverse. Okay? So we have contraction, contraction, expansion, contraction, expansion, contraction. And so you'll see this. Okay, now if we get something like this, it has the ability to reverse or it can very well continue. So now we have two gaps because we have a second expansion. And what we'll do is we'll call this one a minor 
and this one a major. Okay? So this was projecting, and still is projecting, a major mountain. This one, we're just dicing this up. We're dicing this clay up a little, little more. That's all. Minor mountain. They're both gaps. Okay. And what I'm saying is we're learning to see without just one bar. This is good for confirmation. But if we're learning to get a handle on price, we need to see that this one bar, this, is the same as this. Okay? And then even within here, there's probably a minor and a major. So that we're sort of stepping things up from this to this to this to this. So we get minor and major. Everybody with me so far, basically? And then we'll just go look at it. You with me? Okay, so basically we can now just stick to this. Okay, we went over the process, but we can just stick to this. All right? And so we, then we can watch, and we can say, okay, that's a minor mountain, and it can go up, or that's a major mountain. So everybody see we have this little mountain shape in here. And then we have a a big mountain shape in here. I wonder if I can do this like this. No, it's not on that one. So we have a, a small mountain. Maybe it's here. There, I can I see I can do concentric circles all the way out. It's beyond me today, though. So we have a small mountain and a big mountain. All right. We'll take a picture of that. So if we look a little tighter within here, you'll see this generally. All right. Now, this was all explanation. This should make some simple sense, and it's a very good way for us to – just a very simple way for us to view the language of price. So now let's zap all of that, okay, and do this thing in process. You guys ready? So this was yesterday's. ES chart. Does everybody see that this does that juju 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 juju? Except my juju button isn't going. No juju. Ooh, there we go. So everybody sees, and so that's like a gap. It'll be easier to see after the fact, but I want I want to train in seeing this thing in process. And so that would be the one. Contraction. Which is coil. And all this would be the step two. which is expansion or gap, meaning the same thing. All right. So we can watch this. We're projecting. Projecting a 
So I'm doing this in steps. When I saw this, it was just so simple and easy. And I, it's hard to get across, but I'm trying to do this in steps. So everybody see that this is a projected mountain. So first we have to have the ability to recognize the possibility of a – right, Evan? Phil, thanks for playing. And even if you're watching the recording. Now, look in here. Do you see where there might be a minor mountain involved? Just look for maybe a smaller contraction expansion. Do you see where there might be a minor one? Raj, you see it, right? 2847. Yeah, right? You see you see it contract and then lift? Right at the gap? You see the gap, Grace? Good. See, this is all we need to do. We need to be able to spot these things. That's it. And so let's just make this a dotted box here. So you guys can see it. It's you know, it's something like that, right? It's in there, and then it, whoosh, it lifts. And generally, when you see, this is the actual gap. See, there's a space and a space, and these, these bars are all tight into each other. And then lift. There's a difference going on here. And so there's a contract. A straight up, and then a smaller contract, and then a lift. And this is the language. This beautiful that you see in that. And then you watch. And then look, see, it's projecting. And so we'll label this minor mountain. And if minor and major confuses you, just pick one and don't worry about it and let it soak. And so, look, the buyers are actually trying to step here. Two boxes. I got two boxes. That's it. I'm now reading this market. No fancy lines. Two boxes. I am now reading this market and beginning to understand it. I can draw fancy lines. It's not that hard. But here I got two boxes. You can draw lines. All you need to do is be able to see the swings. Okay. Now let's watch. And they're proving it. They're, they're, they're actually turning price a little bit here. See, they're turning. They're, it's, it's trying. It's retesting the mountain. It's zooming the minor mountain. Now, this is very similar to that 240 CAD we were watching. I see now, you know, we have a little mountain here that might turn into a little valley. And, you know, you can even do swings if you want. But look right here. I can make a very simple decision about trades, can I? Somebody invent a trade for me right now. Somebody invent a trade idea. Just from reading. See, no formula. Just from what these two boxes are saying, somebody think about it. And if you're at home, think about it. What invented trade idea could you do at this point? I'm not saying it's the perfect thing. I'm not saying it's going to have perfect risk-reward. But just reading that buyers hit it, buyers got zoomed, minor mountain got zoomed, this is a major. What invented trade idea could you come up with? Phil says buy at 28.40. So Phil's saying we can buy at the mountain, right? Maybe even look for a confirmation or something but or just put stops, but that's an idea. Okay. And what are you looking for, Phil? New highs? Yes. Okay. Now I also have Evan. Sell the minor into the major base. So he's saying sell. See, I can write this trade plan up. I'm going to sell the minor into the major base. That's 
That's beautiful, right? It might not work. It might it might stall early. And it is going up. But what else could you do once it hits the major base, Evan, and you take your money? And then you could think about going the other way, right? Ricardo says, buy the major left or right side of the pivot. Major left or right side of which pivot? See, this would be the this would be selling the right side of this one, and we're going to do left and right side. Don't you worry, but don't worry about left and right side here. This is very simple. Hey, Michael, sell minor into major, right? Sell minor into ma beautiful, right? You guys see it, and then buy it again, possibly if you want to. Okay. All because you can do now. Notice it's not a mountain yet, right? You have to be here on the hard right edge of the chart in real time making decisions. You know, once it's all done, then you have some ideas about some things, and maybe you can do something. But you're reading it. And so this is beautiful. You could make a little plan here to sell that into that and go home, go play golf or whatever you do. Or when it gets down here, you can think about buying it. Or you can tighten stops up when it gets down here and think about punching through that guy. Beautiful. Beautiful. So look at what we've got going now. All we've got going, here's the model. You know, we basically have, you know, we come up here and then we make a smaller one. And now we're through the smaller one. And that's the bigger one. But if you wanted to simplify it, it's just a big mountain like this, where it's possible for it to complete itself or to become a valley. We don't know. Okay, so here we can watch. But we have zoom. Look at the bar. Hard down. Tails. Retest. You know, we're swinging, we're swinging, just like that, we're swinging. See that? No secret sauce, no secret line, no secret amount of data. If your mountain is this freaking big, use a big old mountain if you want. Doesn't matter. But learn to see it. We're going to keep practicing that. And so, okay, that idea worked. From here to here, you take your money. Phil's thinking about buying it. He can either just flat out buy it. He's going to use this as the ES. He's going to use about a four tick stopper on this. He's going to play for new highs. And boom. Now, do we know there's sellers here? Yes. Yes. See the little. Now, do you guys see the minor swing? Minor mountain. Minor valley. With stuff in between. Because you can see the hard down and hard up. The hard down and hard up. Okay. So you watch. Notice, just please look at the bars here, right? This is the gap, and then this hard down through that level that was tested, and then a retest, and then a retest, and now you get this hard up. Do you see? This is a tick chart. Do you see that this not accident? So we have all these tests, test, 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 hard down through, hard back up, after holding, and Mike O said it beautiful, right? He said it's a minor into a major. And this is, ah, it could be like a short con. And then you get a new high. So his price now showed you its intention? Yes. Do you think that this is a pretty good 
See, this is all internal of the swing. See, this is the swing. This is the swing here. This is all internal stuff. But do you think we found the bodies? Where people are playing? Yeah, right, Phil? And so now what we can do is just, you know, consider that markets swing. We can, we can look. There's a the last swing broke. We can look. And then we can wonder about this side of it now. Now that it has some intention. Just like that. See, swing, swing. And that's all because you can view a mountain. See, very simply, without, I mean, I'm just doing a lot of explaining, but very simply, this chart. is a minor mountain and a major mountain. And this is a very simple view of things. And this can relax your mind. And intelligent can, decisions can be made because you can read that. And it's not arbitrary we can see they hold they zoom they retest and you get these two little swings you know one structure creates I mean we can call this a press if you want and do a press structure right see the press expand and then we go like this right so if you looked at it via a press structure you're all good does that make a press structure better than a mountain valley structure? No. They're all the same thing. They're all the same thing. And, you know, you can see where. This is a very simple view. If you wanted to, you know, just be looking at swings, you know, you might be looking at something like this. To, to guide your, your whole thing here. See, this, this helps structure some things out. And you can see, you can even see here where the market did a little swap -a -roo. And this is the last swing broke. And that last swing broke is giving you about the, about the minor in there. And then off it goes. That's that's the way I had mine drawn, because I was also um, what I was looking at was trades in here off of mountains and valleys. Okay. And then later on, thinking about and talking about mountains and valleys. I come in, I look at this, and it's just so simple and easy to see. So simple and easy to see. So what I was doing was down in here, which you know, was a whole nother lesson. You know, just recognize a few things. Recognize the little, recognize the little valley here, guys. And retest and bigger swing and then you can come in and watch it this morning okay let's do it you guys ready to do it you ready to do it this morning this is today today's over where's the big mountain base So I made a whole little video today of this big mountain base, and I went and looked at that mountain base, and yesterday we did something, or I did something over here. So you see the big mountain base. All right, so this is a major mountain, and you should be able to recognize it because it's, it's kind of going straight up. It's kind of going straight up in there. Now, this might be a little harder to see, 
But do you see where a little mountain base might be? So we'll call this the mate. Now, this is today's market. So what happened to me today as I was in here, I was working this thing, and I watched it yesterday with my limited time. And I come in today, and I was looking at lines, and I said, oh, it's just mountains, mountains and valleys. This is, has to do with where they lift them from. And we can just so easily see it here, 2869. So look, at, look for the where there might be a little one. If you're not sure, look for where it might bounce. All right, see it's starting to, to bounce? See the gap here, Grace, again? And so it's in here someplace. But then you, you kind of let price show you. And then you go through. Now we're going to get curious about the backside of it. Ah, see, that's it. That's the little mountain. So this is my today's work. I'm trying to squeeze in some trading. You notice it's looking very similar at least. Sell it. <laughs> well, you want to be careful, Raj, you know. <laughs> you know, a market that's running like this, you got to be a little bit careful, you know. I mean, these guys are pretty excited. Now, the thing about it is we can't we can't make a system because there are plenty of times where this gap will fill halfway. Okay, and not make a mountain. Remember, like we talked about with um, Peter, right? I mean, it, it it can lift and make a swing instead. So we got to be we got got to slow our roll a little bit, or you can sell it, but you know, learn from it. But either way, I want you to see there's some bodies in here. That's all, you know. And then we okay, it's going through. Does it make a new high? No, it's kind of dancing. It's kind of dancing. It's kind of odd. This was a weird punch back through, but it does not make a new high like this one. So everybody see the difference? So Raj's cell would have probably gotten stopped somewhere. Yep, right to the tick probably. That sucks. Sorry, Raj. Don't pull a Nate and sell a market that's ripping up. <laughs> so Roger's sell would have probably got hammered by a little bit there. And uh, this is where the market ended. So, you know, we want to see these messy things. It happens. But I got to tell you, if this thing went ripping through the high, I'd be looking to buy it on that side. And if you sell it, you know, you're going to take a little bit of a stop on it. Um, come... Come come Sunday and Monday, you know, I'll be looking at the major mountain here, this floating down. But I've sold these rods. I've sold these on weekly stocks and such. And there are times where you get hammered and times where you don't. One thing I'll tend to do sometimes is not be, you know, in an up market. I'm not in too much of a hurry like, oh, my God, I'm going to miss it. I'll take maybe this swing. Now, see if I did something like that, Raj, and I bought myself a little bit of room. I got saved. See? You know, if I'd have drawn a line, my line wouldn't have been perfect. Right? It it have busted, but I'd have been saved by a little bit. And so, you know, that's part of trading. You know, there's going to be some messy. It's just going to happen. Um but I'm never in too much of a hurry to sell in a market that's ripping, you know, by the way. Never in too much of a hurry to sell. But anyways, it's a very simple, very simple way to just look at your market. And it has everything to do with where they threw them off the cliff. And this has everything to do with the pressure cooker, too. Okay. 
It's, it's where they threw them off the cliff. Except in the pressure cooker, you know, we're putting it in a special part of the swing. But we can take the essence of that, the, the lump of clay, and make decisions. You know, in today's gold chart, you're watching the market. I'm watching for a turn here, right? I'm thinking maybe this guy's going to turn. I'm watching. I'm watching the bars. This is today. This is me before the session. I'm watching the bars. I'm. Uh, I, I want to get this across. I don't know what it's going to do. The market's up. Them the facts, Jack. Right? The market's up. Them are the facts. I can draw little swings. We're about there. I don't know for sure that I'm going to get long. I'm watching. I'm watching. I'm following the bars. I'm following the swings down. I'm watching. I'm thinking it's going long. I'm, I'm a bit biased here. But I'm following. Understand this about being a trader. When it doesn't do what you want, understand it. And don't get stuck. Ah, where did they throw them off the cliff? Right here is where they threw them off the cliff. Now, I'm not doing that swing anymore. I got the possibility to do a trade here. I mean, it might just be a expansion, but I got the possibility to do a trade here. When I wanted to get long, the market is screaming its head off at me right now. Don't do that. Don't do it. It's yelling. Why? Because I know this is where they threw them off the cliff. You can see stall, 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 watch. See, hit it, hit it. Everybody see the line? Everybody see what the market was doing? This is the market. And here's our little swing. This is what this market is doing. And then I'm watching the bars. I'm watching for effort. Does it turn? Look at the tail. I can go like this. Look at that tail full of sellers. Does it get zoomed? I'm listening. I'm hunting rabbits. I'm listening. I'm not telling. I'm not forcing. I'm listening. And then when it doesn't go long, I don't get stuck. Ah, it's telling me it wants to go down some more. And when they rip it back up into that, I have a trade. Now, being that it's a Friday and a day trading thing, you know, part of the, at least my rules, is I'm, going, I'm not holding that over the weekend. Part of my rules, and I'm day trading, is, you know, I'm going to be out before. I don't want to hold that over the weekend. But you can see the decision process, where they threw them off and not getting stuck. And that's a lot different than just saying, and I teach this, look at the forgotten line. Zoom, retest, crawls back up it. Okay, you can do that. Or I could just say, don't worry about that. Look at the, look at the press. Expand. It's wabbit season, not rabbit season. It's wabbit season. We're hunting wabbits. Shh. Right, Edward. Edward put put bugs up there. Nice reversal of the previous pressure cooker. Good, Nate. You see that? Good, beautiful, Nate. Watch, watch, guys. You guys see what Nate sees? I want you guys learning to read. New high. Where does a new high lift from? Right here. See that? 
Boom, boom. See the mountain? See, see it See it making a, a little mountain in here? See, it's projecting, making – and then other side. And so this would become a what? What type of trade relative to that pressure cooker, Nate? And so we can just view this guy with the pressure cooker and say this would be a type 2. See, just the fact that it comes down here and nearly double bottoms, it's giving you a little bit of information about, you know, the buyers aren't all that, that interested anymore. This is where the friggin' buyers were interested. Right there. Right? They were boom, boom, uh-uh. Now, this could be a wash, but look at the decision process in here. It's where they threw them off the cliff. And we can do a V, we can do a this, we can do a line, but it's all the same thing. We're looking at where they threw them off the cliff. We're looking at just simple simple ways of seeing a market. Now, without this, if all you're using is median lines, then you'd be looking at something like this and, you know, be waiting for touches somewhere or something. The median line is just describing the whole process to you. So, you know, we have tools to see that this is the trend. They step up. They try to step up. Zoom. Retest. So, again, this is going to be next week's biz. Not today's. It's going to be next week's biz. But everything's all in swings, and I just wanted to point out how we can simply look at markets with some things. Let's look at one live thing, all right, that we can at least finish today off with. I have something in mind. There. Let's just... This is a weekly AMAT. This is, this, you know, this is the semiconductor industry here. Let your eyes roam this chart. Just see a mountain. Look at a zoom. I was thinking maybe we can set up a homework or case study section to post examples of things. Good idea, Nate. Let me, um, unless you guys want to start that on your own. Um, at some point, yeah, I'm going to actually be asking you guys to do some of that, and I'll be telling you some things, and then you can have your own sort of random channel to do that. But, yeah, give me some time to think about it, or um, I think any – I don't know if any of you can set up a channel. I'm not sure. But you know what? Um, no? No? You know what, Nate? I'll uh, I'll set you up so you can. You and Grace, because you guys have been the ones most interested in it, and Edward. Okay, I set I set you guys up so you you can, and then people can sort of feed off of you. And then if I have some ideas, I'll throw them in, because you might do better than to wait for me right now. I've got my my head in coding websites. And so I'll set you and Grace and Edward up. So you can um, make some channels there. So we're going to get all that stuff together. If that's okay with you, Nate and Grace, Edward. If you don't want that kind of responsibility, let me know. Mike says the good, the bad, and the ugly. Yes. Depending on, you know, you know whenever we're doing homework, Mike or anybody, I want you guys to remember this. That this isn't a place of perfection. You know, don't. Try to be perfect. What matters is the, the, the try, the attempt. And we have a really good group here. You know, generally the forums, they get a bit ugly. But we have a really good group here. We have a small group here. And everybody has always been very good here. So we shouldn't have any problems. But don't worry. And we want the good, the bad, and the ugly. I mean, you don't necessarily have to post your trades, but we could set up a channel for that if you want. 
But when it comes to homework, you know, anybody who's willing, collaborate, you know, and help each other. I'm going to help structure some of that as we get going. I will. It is about being positive, Edward, absolutely. And with a good group of mature people, we can create stuff. And so we'll set up some channels. I'll help structure. I have some ideas. I'll help structure. But in the meantime, you guys can start something, and, and we can do practice homework or however you want to do it. Mike says, I wish my account was more positive. Some days, me too, Mike. But we keep learning to read, right? We keep learning to do it. And the truth is, trading is hard. Learning is hard. There is no formula. So as long as we all understand that, that this can be a very good creative place for this kind of a thing. There's always room. I'm trying to improve. That's why I'm here. So anyways, I'll get with you guys and, and make sure you can set up things. And if you have ideas, you can... You can do it, and then I'll be giving times where I specifically want you guys to get interactive with me. But I need a minute for that, so I'm still catching up with my life. So look at the mountain. And this is for, for Pete, too, right? See the mountain? See the zoom? This is one way you know. See it? Whoosh. It's a bit funky, but it's all mountain. And this is where people get all, oh, my God, I'm going to miss it. i got to get in. i got to get in. That's current. See, this is no accident, guys. This is just a way of reading charts. That's all. Now, I've been doing mountains. By the way, Nate and you guys, if you want to do some homework on this minor and major mountain, how about this? I'll give you guys a little bit of homework. I'll set you up tonight, Nate and Grace and Edward. Make sure you can make channels. Make a channel to show major and minor valleys. Right? We did mountains. Valleys are going to look a little different, ain't they? See? Valleys are going to look a little different. And so you got to be able to post both up, up and down, and that's good practice. And if you go find example here, I'll draw the model real quick, and then we'll wrap it up. Come on. Come on, you can do it. So this is a – and you can use whatever color scheme you want. So this would be a minor mountain. And this would be a major mountain. And listen, guys, just drawing the models and then go finding examples in any time frame. You don't have to post live charts, all right? Please, a lot of you guys, be careful posting live trades. Because, you know, it does, you know, once you get public with it, it does something to you. So unless you're ready for it, you know, that kind of transparency, you know, just be careful with it because then you tend to want to protect it. I would like to get a room where we start to post some live stuff, but I want everybody to be careful with that kind of thing. The first thing is first, and that's your learning and your trading. Um, you know, when we start doing live stuff, we start getting a little bit antsy and a little bit weird and a little bit, I mean, live trades. You know, we start to get a little bit crazy sometimes. You know, we all want to we all want to do good, but let's start out with homework first and finding it on charts, and then making observations, right? And so this would be a. major valley and this would be a, a minor valley. So I did a whole bunch of mountains. What you can do is just 
I don't know. See if you can see it simply on a chart. Okay. You'd be surprised how often we can see the up and not the down or the down and not the up. And so, right, Grace? Sometimes it twists us. And so it's good to, to practice seeing that. Because here we have this messy price, but we want to see this. Mountain, valley. And look, we can make decisions off of this. Look, we could get long the minor mountain. Do you guys see what I just did, right? We have one big one. And then we have a smaller one. And see, this is the kind of work I want you to personally see in your practice. That's why the homework thing is good. And when the minor and mountain major swaps, right? So we can see, look at the inner... Oh, Wendy muted me. She says I'm talking too much. All right. So let's save this. And I want everybody to be, I know it starts to add a lot, but the practice, thank you for mentioning it, Nate, the practice helps us see this and make a personal trip to see it. Mountains and valleys and pivots, oh my. <laughs> Is there a song, a little, little ditty in there? All right. So we're out of here. You guys have a good weekend. I'll get you guys, Grace, Nate, and I'm, you don't have to do it right away, but I'll get you set up to, to 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 add channels or whatever, okay? And thank you, Pete, for the question. Simple that mountains and valleys. Go practice and see if you see it on your charts, in your tick charts, on your twenty, on your daily charts. And what happens? Look at look at how we can dice out a market while everybody's jumping around. Hey Mike, Wendy a trader? No, she used to trade with me. She used to do some things with me when I was doing industry rotation and that, but she doesn't trade. She says I'm crazy. I don't think she could take me. But a long, yeah, smart. A long time ago, we used to do industry rotation Watch the, during the day. You know, watch the semis. Right? These are the semis. Get all hot, and then it would rotate into the drugs because everybody got a little scared because somebody said something. And then the drug stocks would rotate into, you know, whatever. So interesting stories. Thank you, Stephen. Appreciate you showing up. See you guys on Monday. And remember, this is all about seeing simply. It takes a little work, though. And we'll see you on Monday. I appreciate you guys and your attention this week.